Hello, 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 and uh, welcome to another wonderful Wednesday webinar. Um, we have uh, the delight of introducing Richard from Solar for Schools. Um, really fantastic project that is is uh, helping to uh, raise awareness and education about renewables um, in schools and uh, and and lots of benefits to the school and energy back to the grid and uh, next generation coming on renewable. So uh, I'll pass over to, to, to Richard for a little bit of an intro and then we're going to show a quick film and then back to Richard. Richard, thank you so much for coming. What an amazing project you're doing. Tell us a little bit more about, about things. Thank you, thank you for your nice words, Phoenix. I think we've met the Net Zero Festival and I've only actually been at the company for three months. I'm one of the project leads here and do some of the marketing. And one thing we've been trying to do is just to get our message out to as many people as possible. So thanks for the opportunity, everyone, to explain a bit about what we do. And we've got a video that we recently had designed, so we can we can show that as well. But for me, I kind of start with the name Solar for Schools and what it kind of implies. It just implies solar installation on schools' roof, roofs. And despite this being true, for me, it's about more than that. It's about creating a synergy between social foundations such as a school and ecological boundaries. It transforms schools into kind of resilient and sustainable hubs that contribute positively to both their local communities and the broader global context. That's how I kind of want to set up the video for today to kind of think that, yes, it is about the ecological problems and addressing them with solar panels but it's also about really boosting the social foundations that schools fit in and when we consider a lot of the problems that schools have had and people within the schools that's kind of the reason that that we want to basically push push home so i think that's that's a good segue into starting the video now phoenix if if you may okay lovely jubbly i'm just going to share screen choose the right screen which is that one okay this is a really really inspiring film Tell me when you can see this. And Optimistic Productions have done a really good job on this. We've been working with them to get this short documentary out to basically encapsulate some of the points I was just talking about. So it doesn't come across that we're just installers and solar panel providers, but we're really trying to boost the next generation with car carbon literacy education. So over to you. Brilliant. Really inspiring. Watch this. It's just uh, six, seven minutes. Richard. We, we can't keep going the way we are at the minute. We need to think of different ways to use energy. If the climate crisis is to be solved, students need to have the opportunity to see what solutions look like. Having solar panels is the start of that. We wanted to be environmentally friendly and also to cut costs as much as we could. Gas and electric is such a major cost. And if there's something out there that can save us money that is risk-free and easy to implement, then I would suggest to all schools to go for it. We're Solar for Schools. Our main aim is to put solar panels on all the schools in England and even the world. But for today, we're focusing on Barncroft Primary School here in East London. We're going to put 162 panels on Barncroft. That should save the school quite a lot of money. Solar for Schools helps the school navigate its way through the process of getting solar onto their roofs. Solar for Schools were absolutely fantastic to work with. They guided us along each step of the journey. As you can see, there's a nice high flat bit over here. It's a great place to put some solar panels. We take the hassle out of putting solar panels on the school. We look after everything from start to finish, from the machines coming in, the fencing, the scaffolding. The planning applications that have to go in with the local authority. We take all that hassle off the school and they just have to enjoy the power that the panels win. Solar for Schools gives schools an opportunity to get solar panels in the way that they want to. They can invest in them, they can look to us to invest in them, or they can part own them. And it's really up to them which way they want to go. There's no right way or wrong way, it's the way that they want to do it and the way they feel comfortable. Well, having this sort of funding from socially minded investors makes the impossible possible for schools that don't have capital for investment in renewable technologies. The solar panels cost us nothing. We didn't have the capital backup to be able to go ahead and purchase the solar panels ourselves as a school. However, we were still keen to know that we could make savings financially for the school in the long term, which is really important for us. And this option meant there was no risk to us at all. 
The solar panels here have really helped the school reach more of a carbon neutral footprint. Two thirds of the electricity that the solar panels are generating is used directly in this school. So it's making a big impact. One of the reasons why we wanted solar panels was to lower the energy cost for the school. So here we're going to have around 70 kilowatts up on this roof, which is going to have a massive impact on the school's finances. We've actually saved about £10,000, which is a great amount of money for our first year of having solar panels. Once I started working with the Solar for Schools team, I realised that they had all of the knowledge, they had a way of raising the money, and that they would also use our solar panels as a tool for education, which was the most important part of all. We set up Solar for Schools with the aim of educating the next generation on energy and decarbonisation putting solar panels on a school and then using the solar panels and the revenue from those solar panels to enable that education is the idea behind Solar for Schools. Solar for Schools provides education around energy and sustainability. So there's a long-term impact of the school having those panels on their rooftops. When we first showed the children the solar panels, a lot of them did not know what they were. So, wow, well, what are those on the, you know, on the roof? done a lot of lessons in, in school based on what they do, you know, how they generate electricity. The children have, have learned a lot from doing it, especially from the workshops and the assemblies. So energy comes in different forms. When we go into a school and a school has solar technology, students inside get excited, inspired. We encourage their learning. We encourage that excitement by offering in-class workshops and really try to keep them inspired and engaged. We can look at our solar production on a website, which is linked to our solar panel, so the students can see what we're producing in real time. What's really exciting is it would give students that incentive to see how, through their lives, green energy will make a difference to them. Higher up school year, fives and sixes, are now looking at how in the future, if more schools and more houses do have solar panels, how that could lower the carbon footprint. When they go out into the world, they can actually apply some of the principles about sustainable education and really develop their own careers, looking at caring for the world and knowing what it's all about. Having the children really come on board and see the impact themselves, I think that's really rewarding. That's what we're all here for. I've like gone back to my mum, my dad, and taught them new things that they didn't know. So if students know that we're in a point of crisis and they learn about it, they're going to be able to go home and spread the word. So they're going to play a big role in our transition. I do think more schools should come on board. You know, we have a lot of roof space and I, I would say to any schools wanting to do it, you know, the, the process was really smooth. Everybody's very supportive. I'd recommend it to, to anybody. Investors will be comforted by the fact that they're doing a lot of good for the environment for schools, for school children, and educating them about the importance of climate change. This additional return, less tangible, but nevertheless very important, is something that I feel will appeal to a lot of investors. By getting solar onto your school, it empowers students to actually think, gosh, I can do something locally to reduce my carbon. And that's helping nationally to meet targets. And that's globally helping us to reduce carbon emissions. And it's empowering young people to actually have that opportunity to have a say in their future and what it's going to look like. It's definitely a great thing to do. There are no negatives. It's great for the students. They're so involved, but also for the school. You're going to save a ton of money and you're doing something great for the environment. There's really no reason not to go ahead and do it. If what we do resonates with you and you'd like to join us and find out more about how you too could be involved with these projects, come and join our community and register at Solar for Schools. Thanks for that, Phoenix. Wow, fantastic. A lot in there, so much. Um, Richard, uh, over to you. That's very educational, so much. Um, yeah, it's, it's almost a mini documentary, um, not really an advert, and it kind of really encapsulates how we feel as well as a company, um, which is nice to get across. I'll kind of explain bits of it in a bit more detail and give you a bit more of a flavour of how we go about doing some of those things because we're basically decentralizing energy production schools can become contributors to the energy grid distributing benefits to the community 
this year we're starting to do school events where schools can basically bring together their local community to discuss their journey towards going solar. It's an opportunity to demonstrate environmental leadership by adopting solar energy. The school can showcase it, its commitment to sustainable practices, which should set an example to other institutions and boost this culture of environmental responsibility within the community. This also transcends through to the students who were involved in the whole process of solar installation. From the first initial visit through to the various workshops we do throughout the 25 year um, solar lifespan. For example, I went to Adderley Primary in Birmingham, I think a month ago, and I did one of the initial visits where you basically go around, you make sure the building is feasible to have solar on top. You kind of look around there, what trees are there, is there shade, how's it going to work? And then you also deliver a workshop. So I took the students outside, let them fly a drone. They kind of looked at their roof and we kind of engaged them at that first initial point. Okay, this is your roof. This is what it could be creating. Let's have a think about what energy is being created in this classroom, the energy you use, and then let's start that thought process right from the first visit. Um, I'll touch more on the education program soon, but I should add that sometimes students are involved even before that initial visit. So on my second day working for Solar for Schools, I kind of got thrown into the baptism by fire approach and got sent to the school climate assembly in Birmingham with speakers there such as Chris Packham and companies like us providing workshops and tools for students to take back to their schools. This was really shocking to me because not only was I completely out of my depth, but there was a real sense of optimism and activism in the room. And it's something that I didn't have when I was at school so much. So it was like this shift, this shift of energy um, and this shift of we, we want something to help us achieve achieve a lot of our aims and have a positive impact. The irony about the workshops that we delivered there on this day is I also became one of the students. I was learning from one of our brilliant co colleagues, Danielle, <clears throat> that there are tangible ways you can affect outcomes, even when you're at a young age, like a student at school. And activism, it really is a source of energy. Where that activism takes you can sometimes be the challenge, as we will want to have a positive impact and doing it in the way that can have the, the biggest effects can be hard to navigate. Anyway, the panelizer platform that we were showing them during the workshop basically allows schools to look at satellite image of their school. They then put the solar panels on the roof of their school and it allows them to instantly see the kind of savings, costs and energy production that the panels would provide. And then they can automatically export that into a presentation. This shows all the data um, to the student so they can then take that to a school and in theory to the teacher or whatever stakeholder they choose to have an impact. The reason I mention this and the reason this was a really extraordinary moment for me in the company on day two was that one of the students after one of these workshops in Birmingham contacted me and they asked me to send them the presentation that they worked on during the workshop. I gave it to them and they showed their teacher. They then showed their headmaster and then it escalated right to the governor's board. And now multiple schools in that trust are looking at solar provision um, for all of their schools. So from this workshop, having that really optimistic approach of what, what tools can I gain here? How can I help my school? How can I think locally about what I can do? Really translated all the way through. Um, back on the topic of education though, we recognize that teachers really don't have much time. They don't have the resources they need and sometimes they simply can't be there to teach about climate literacy and the journey their school's going with to be solar that's why i think in the video they touched on it that we we produce teacher templates workshops assemblies and we've had a government funded app which basically walks students through different modules obtaining green skills along the way this app also includes a teacher platform where Teachers can set, monitor, and track results for students. Wow. This kind of collective learning is trying to basically help schools because we realized through COVID that a lot of learning has been moved to online and resources can't always be there for things like climate literacy in this way. So our app's basically linked to the curriculum and it's meant to give teachers a way of, of doing that with, with, with some support from us. 
it's also important because more and more schools are creating eco clubs in the UK. And I think it's a fantastic way and gives a really good opportunity for students to discuss current issues and the issues with, with the climate through the app. And it really encourages students to think locally about their emissions, what they're doing with their energy. And that makes them think nationally about targets and then hopefully affecting global outcomes. It is starting this chain of thought at schools. That's one of the main reasons behind what we do. And I think uh, we, we spoke about it in the video. It's the solar savings help fund the education. Um, I've mentioned on my second day working for this company that when I was observing Danielle, it was brilliant. And she is one of many teachers that have come from a teacher background at, at the company. They kind of, empathize with the problem and then now they want to be part of the solution the, te the, the teachers within our company that are now working for us they've helped forge the education package they've helped they help deliver on a regular basis all of the education workshops and more importantly they help trickle down an ethos in the company that means we acknowledge the constraints of schools and we aim to aid teachers as much as we can we also work with solar for schools community benefit society which is a non-for-profit organization set up in 2016 and it's governed by volunteer directors elected by the schools within it. In fact, every school that comes on with us becomes a member of the society's board and has voting power if they need to use it. For example, what's the name of the group, Richard? Sorry, say again. It's the Solar for Schools Please. Community Benefit Society. Solar for Schools Community Benefit Society. Okay, yeah, gotcha. This is the other wing of yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um and a really good example of that kind of working in motion was during COVID. As you all know, energy prices spiked and it was really hard for everyone, particularly schools. Um, and whilst electricity suppliers and distributors across the country increased electricity costs for the end user, the members of our society voted to cap solar costs. This was approved by the directors for a period of time on on the director body and that basically resulted in the ppa rate which is the power purchase agreement rate staying the same for all of our schools for that period of time this gave the schools voting power and what i guess more importantly doesn't abandon them in times of electricity companies seeking to make outrageous profits instead we're trying to work alongside schools built by a community of schools in this society so i guess i should touch on the challenge and why I'm here uh, and, and the kind of help that we need. There's one simple word there really, and that is scalability. I guess I'm trying to get our message out to as many people as possible. And thanks for the opportunity to talk to you guys. But it's also generally to just talk about the feasibility of what we do and the options that are available to schools and to also anyone that is involved with with schools or because it, there's more than one way you can have an effect with our business it's it's not just that you refer a school to us you can also help invest some of the money into the projects you can share our content there's educational content online there's the app so there's lots of ways that different people can integrate differently with us um but typically it's hard for community benefit societies to navigate through regulatory hurdles they're seen as a risky investment to both individuals and institutions alike. But despite this, in the last year, really happy to say that we received a million in grants from the government, which has helped more schools on their journey to decarbonise. Um, for example, the National Grid has given us, I think, £500,000 each year for five years to basically help schools go solar with us. Part of the reason for this is to help level up schools in the UK that have struggled financially with energy. It's a really big thing for us because we don't discriminate on any area or any school as long as it has the right roof type to be able to put solar on it. These grants have basically um, helped us to get out to more schools and the more of these agreements we have, the better. A really good example of this that's near me um, is Oxford Squires. It's a school in Oxfordshire that closed down because they couldn't afford the energy price hike with the new savings and a really good management team, they've now been able to reopen. So it's also trying to help schools that might have closed previously. Schools basically have the option to go ahead with us with no capex, meaning there's there's no startup costs for going solar. 
essentially over time as schools save on cheaper energy they pay back the loan to the community benefit society that funded the solar at the start this pays back the funders that want to fund solar on schools and make a return i think we currently have between 50 and 100 schools in the pipeline waiting for funding so that side of the business model is is vital moving forward We've also designed software so schools can kind of see exactly how their systems are running. I think it was mentioned in the video that that live data can be used for workshops to inform the students of the renewable alternatives and see live feedback of what's going on. We look after the system for 25 years and deliver that education for 25 years and we kind of make sure everything is working properly and as it should. This aftercare is vital because a lot of private solar operators and installers in this industry don't always do this. They install and then leave the project unattended. We've seen this in countless systems where we, we've we come in and after five years, the school's solar doesn't work or, or eight years. And it, and it really does vary. And the point is that variability doesn't give schools that safeguarding that they really need for their energy. So kind of making sure you have that aftercare is a really big part of, of what we do and that asset management. So we want to kind of push to schools that we're, we're hassle-free and we handle all of the equipment so schools don't have to, whilst giving the schools the results they can boast about with the live data. It also kind of transcends into things like warranty and these ideas. And that if, say, for example, a school's roof is damaged or it's falling down, God forbid, we would take the panels down and wait till the school is ready with their new roof before we reinstall. This aftercare, again, is something that schools quite like as it reinforces the idea that we're with schools for the whole process. And this part of the business model is how we keep afloat, this asset management. And it's no added cost once a school comes on board with us. It's included in the PPA rate, which is almost always cheaper than fossil fuel energy. This idea basically points that economic value is being derived from social value by helping the social foundations of a school you can derive economic value so to wrap up um i know that's a lot of information with the video but previously we didn't have a strong marketing presence that's why i met you phoenix at the net zero festival so getting our message out to more and more people is always a good thing for us i also think the name of the business as i mentioned really doesn't encapsulate the net benefits of what we're trying to do once you explain it a bit more, you see examples and you relate to schools and your own experience in schools, the picture becomes a bit clearer. It's the social foundations that is at the heart of what we're trying to do. And bridging that from the point of addressing ecological well-being is the integrated approach that we're committed to. Uh, yeah, I guess that's all from me for now. And I'll pass over to you, Phoenix. Brilliant. Thank you, Richard, so much for coming. It was fantastic to meet you at the Net Zero Festival to see how mainstream uh, environmental uh, issues and sustainability has gone. Uh, and someone who's been active since the 90s. Um, so <laughs> if people have got any uh, uh, questions, uh, you can either um, stick your hand up in the reactions down the bottom here. There's a right at the bottom line uh, of the screen. There's a reactions, little smiley face of a plus, and you can raise your hand like that. Um, or you could go old school and stick your hand up like that, um, but it's easier for me facilitating if you if you do that. Straight off the mark, University Challenge, Matt from Bristol. Eh. <laughs> Thanks, Phoenix. So I'm actually a governor of a primary school, quite a big one in Bristol. That's why I'm on the call. So I'm really keen. We've already got a few solar panels, but you know I really would like to take this to the school to get more. So you're saying there's a no capex option. In which case, it's it's a PPA basically for what twenty years or something? Twenty five years. Twenty five yeah, years, and 20, then twenty five years for the funding, and then also the education and everything else. Right. So, and then, and, and it's a set price for the electric we buy off the panels that you've installed. Is that it? Yes, but it's in line with inflation, like any PPA rate. Um, but yeah, essentially. Okay, and then, and then the idea is that you're your investors are making their what four or five percent or whatever and that's the that's the business model yeah so there's obviously more than one funding option so it wouldn't just be exclusively that but typically most schools don't have the startup capital to be able to fund it themselves but that is obviously another option as well and in that case we would 
have a much lower PPA rate for the school. We would still do the asset management to monitor the system and we would do the education, but they can basically, they own the system. But with the other model that most schools go ahead with us with, um, they basically have that PPA rate at the start um, that, that we just mentioned. I think for the case you just gave, you said that you've already got solar on your school's roof on some of the yeah. schools. There's a few. There's there's a few uh, speckled solar panels across yeah. some, some of our roofs. There's 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 way more capacity for more. So I guess that feasibility is a big part of what we do as well. Like, firstly, looking online, we can see the solar panels on your roof. We can kind of work out a rough design and approach towards you. Okay, what can work for you? Sit down with you and see what what works. What you're paying now in terms of energy prices, um, and then we can kind of work out a roadmap to whether it's feasible or not. Um, but in terms of the feasibility and all that stuff, it's all done in house. Um, and then we'll take that to you, but, but yeah, I mean, after, it'd be great to catch up, maybe have a call, uh, after this and we can talk about it in a bit more detail if that works for you. Definitely. And just one final question. You said you've got 50 to hundred schools in the pipeline that you said they're waiting for investment. Does that mean you need more investment before you can deliver them or no, sorry, they're just, they're just, they're just in the process of getting panels. It's just the development process. Um, so you've got plenty of funding. We have plenty of fun. It's always a challenge funding. It's a recurring challenge because as we grow and as we scale, we need that investment from funders. So as we, what we've seen basically in the last years, we're getting a lot more grants from the government. They're helping us, which is helping schools. And we're, recuperating more money from investment as well but it is the challenge it's how can you maintain all of the aspects at once so i think this year the fundraising is really important for us um but at the moment yeah the schools i've mentioned in development uh are all on track to to get their solar panels great brilliant thanks yeah, great question. i should add if you leave your email in the chat then i'll pick it up with you i'll pick up with you after Right. Uh, on that point, send each other contacts directly uh, messages. But if you want to hear updates on the CC network, please direct message me your email. Over to Tim in sunny Carmarthen, the freshly opened uh, Poundland Carmarthen. Thank you. Um, I just a, a, a question about um, you talked about uh, investor pipelines and obviously the school's pipelines. I was wondering if you wanted to start something local that you can actually make sure that the, the fundraising you're doing locally is for your school and and or or would it have to fund the the first in the queue of your pipeline it's a really good point and it's something we're looking at so as i've kind of as i mentioned earlier i've only been in the company for about three months now coming up to three months so a lot of these issues i'm kind of getting my teeth into now and to simply answer your question yes if you said i want to fund this school we'll be able to facilitate that. And we want to make that a really viable option moving forward because it is all local. They're all local issues and every school touches someone in a different way and you want to be able to influence that school. So I'm completely with you. And and yeah, that's something we're looking at moving forward. Thank you very much. No worries. Help, Tim. Yeah. Um, over to Helen. Yeah. Um... I suppose my question is, how much do do you work with other uh, similar groups that are going into schools and teaching about things? I know we've got energy heroes here in in Leeds, and there's one there's one in Bath called Energy Sparks who takes sponsorship from Drax, which is just appalling. <laughs> You know, Drax are saying how blooming marvellous they are and they're flipping burning trees and cutting down virgin forests. And, you know, and also, have you got a a definite plan that you will not take sponsorship from such people or or is that something you would go into? So to tackle your the first part of mm. your question with working with people, uh, yes, we work with other community energy groups across the UK and to be frank it it's really important because at the moment as I mentioned community benefit societies as a concept to some people seems quite risky and it has regulatory hurdles so cross-referencing and sharing those those lessons together is is vital 
And there's been lots of examples of that. Um, what was the second part of your question about sponsorships? Do you mind just expanding on that bit? Yeah, just I have, I know you're funded by community shares sort of thing, but is sponsorship from big companies some a route you would go down in order to get more money? And if so, what safeguards have you got that you're not being used as greenwash? Uh, okay, I, I'm really confident that that wouldn't happen. Um, I think the whole concept behind what we're trying to do is we're giving power to the schools. It's people, the people that are investing in us typically are people that just care about their school. They might have their, um, their family members going through education. They want to make a return and also have all these social benefits to their to their family whilst they're going through that education and then on the outcome okay great you make a bit of money but the social benefits the green skills that the your family's developed is the main driver and it is individuals in terms of the larger funding we've had it's mainly grants from uh the government so as i mentioned the national grid tees valley um it's these sort this is where the funding's coming from at the moment i don't know any sponsorships from any other like commercial companies like you said um I know that doesn't happen uh as I said I've only been here three months but um yeah. I'm very confident that doesn't happen I should also add with partnerships as well we work with educational partners um so I think switch alliance is a really good educational partner of ours that we worked with and they basically created these really good educational videos that's now integrated in our app mm. so yeah um I think working with people and collating the lessons and, you know, bringing together good ideas is is definitely something we're really open to. That's great. If, if uh, Switch Alliance, if anyone can find that website and pop it in the chat. And if anyone's got any good solar connection uh, websites, please do put them in the chat because we network this afterwards. Over to Chris, fresh back from a sunny Germany tour. Over. Hi, hi, hi. Um, yeah, Richard, I've got a few things, some of which might be better discussed outside of here um i've worked in education i've worked in roofing uh and you know study kind of green roofs and things like that um but I also i'm a member of the transition uh network and uh, something that i've done is is taught in schools kind of sustainable things from gardening to recycled carpentry to food growing and stuff like this and one thing that i think is important and and works and, and doesn't cost anyone any money is kind of promoting complementary uh, education so let's say you guys guys go in you do uh, renewable energy and stuff like that you've got a school there that's already asking those kind of questions that's already thinking how can we be more sustainable um do you have like a, a group of uh, a list of partners that might deliver things like uh school uh, you know school gardening growing your own food in school is a very popular thing at the moment um things like um yeah just kind of green science recycling and stuff like that and i mean i'm just taking names out of a hat or even you know kind of sustainable transport where whether it be cycling or other things just a list of people that you can say oh if you're interested in going greener here's some people that we know offer these kind of things in your area um so you're kind of feeding off the the, the interest the enthusiasm that you've started with the school um in, in installing the panels i love the question and i love the premise of it this idea that we've already touched on of intersectionalizing the different aspects of climate literacy so that we're feeding off each other and learning all the different aspects i guess for us it completely depends on the school we customize our kind of education package to work for the school so say for example you wanted to have a workshop on a specific thing, we would come in and do it and tailor it to you. You might, a lot of schools have eco clubs, as I mentioned, and they touch on a lot of different issues. Um, we obviously are best served talking about the kind of data and how you can start thinking about what a kilowatt is and you can start thinking about electricity and then you can show them the kind of feedback from the solar panels. You can engage them with the drone and you can talk about all of the energy side, but then with the nature side, it's complementary, right? Um, so we've made sure that all of the education is linked to the curriculum. So it's not just out the blue about it, but it's actually really related to what they're learning. But in terms of working with other education providers about, for example, nature, recycling, 
all of those aspects. To my knowledge, we don't do that currently, but it's a really good point. And I think it's something that we should look at. So if you want to touch on that after, um, I, I'm happy to do that. Yeah. I mean, are you putting your email in the, the chat? Have you put it in there? Yeah, it's just, I'll put it in now. It's just richard at solarforschools.co.uk. Yeah. Okay, um, well, I'll, I'll send you an email. Also, I just wanted to say hello this is me this is my face <laughs> and um i don't know i'll give you a ring either later this week or next week or something um because as i say i've got a few other ideas based on past lives experiences that yeah I, i'd like to chat with, but not necessarily take up the rest of the time here so yeah it, All right, that's right. i think it's really important though is making those connections and kind of delving into the different things that also advice like what, what other ways can we do it because We've been doing it for a little while now, and it's this constant reiterative process of improving as you go. Um, and there's lots of ways ways you can do that, but I think we're going in the right direction. So, yeah, I'll be happy to pick that up. Yeah, yeah. Okay, nice one. Thank you. Um, I've just got a few points personally just to pop in there, and then anyone who you know, wants to speak or hasn't spoken or stick your hand up. Um, I think what you're doing is absolutely incredible. We've had the seed of an idea for quite a long time in the Climate Emergency Centre Network. There are now 25 odd centres, about another five, six, seven land climate emergency centres, which I'm linking up with. But what we have is old shops and um, all sorts of spaces on the high street that are reaching out to total public out of, you know, we've seen green energy and, you know, green festivals and wind and solar for, you know, since the early 90s. But these are reaching out to people on the high street and maybe i don't know we're still trying to get more of a survey done this year of the centers but you know maybe five to eight or ten of the centers are doing either some reduced home energy advice or they're telling people about wind and solar in some capacity but what we want to do is set up a renewable energy working group and help all those groups send stuff out to the network they're all autonomous they're all independent but we've helped them come along and if we can send them displays about wind and solar and also run, I was going to try and talk to Victron Inverters and some others in my sponsorship. If, if we could get a few solar panels, batteries, inverter to get a working thing in the ones that could set up, then they could also be educational spaces. So we'd love to work with you guys listening to what I was thinking. We should we should try and get each climate mode centre to link with the local school. Some of them are linking with universities. Um, but just tell me a little bit more. Um, you mentioned, you know, this is an educational project for young people that it linked in with the national curriculum and you mentioned green transition. So is this something that school kids can gradually learn the different modules you provide and then go on into green jobs training kind of programs? Cause I love this question. Um, so we're working on that already and it'd be great to link up. Yeah. So behind the scenes, that is, that is the aim. I don't have a date for you or a particular timeline of that, but we've been having discussions of that. How can we, literally take some of the green skills learn and translate that into an actual impact um obviously we know that children have a huge influence on adults and even just starting that conversation at a really young age is vital um and all the different stakeholders in schools can kind of come together and take it in different ways so the education is about kind of not just empowering the students but empowering everyone in the school and being really proud of having that ownership of renewable energy um, and translating it to their community. That's why the events where schools can kind of host and talk about their process is really important as well. And that probably links to what you've just said with the community uh, groups as well. Um, it might also be worth mentioning that we only do solar on schools. We don't do solar on com like random commercial buildings. And I guess the main reason for that, there's a few, but, one of the main reasons is normally with commercial buildings, there's a big distinction between the end user and um, the building itself, the owner of the building. And that difference can mean a lot of different things. But with a school, it's so tightly linked that the owner of the building and the user are benefiting together. That intersectional approach is really important. And I think I mentioned it earlier, it's that synergy between the ecological barriers and the social foundations that I really subscribe to and I think it's really important um yeah that's great I, I see you there Chris I just want to see if I can link in a couple of others come to you, Chris um just we've got Mike Bimble here with you um with us uh, Mike runs Bimble Solar that does a, a solar renewable energy supply company but also a solar powered festival Mike um 
thank you so much for coming, Mike. I'm really glad you could tune in. Is there any uh, comments, feedback, or anything you wanted to say? Um, uh, hi. Um, yeah, it's a great project. Really um, amazed by it. Surprised I haven't heard about it before, actually. Um, and yeah, I'd love to be able to promote it in any ways we can and try and support it however we can. So, you know, happy to promote it through all of our channels to people and get the word out there. You know, just personally, I know several schools that it would really benefit. Um, so, yeah, I'm really happy to, you know, get involved as much as I can and, and try and help, you know, it, help make it's it one work. Of, it's one of those things everyone knows of a school, everyone went to school, everyone knows, like, places they can have an impact and i think one of the really nice parts of the business and the thing i was talking about with activism is anyone can help with this it's not like it has to be a school teacher or it has to be the financial department literally anyone can refer a school anyone can start the conversation anyone can promote it in any different way they like and anyone can invest if you want to get a return and you want to send your kids to school and you want to have all these social benefits whilst gaining a bit of a return it's a great green investment as opposed to you know maybe some other ones out there so I guess that's the that's that's the aim. So yeah, I really appreciate that, and uh, yeah, I can send you some stuff that would be great to post. Thanks. Yeah, please do. I've I've copied your email address down, so I'll um I'll drop you a message afterwards. And... Fantastic. Yeah, it'd be it'd be good if anyone I spoke to, if you want to continue the conversation, to send me an email because I might struggle going back through the chat. So I appreciate that for anyone I spoke to for this. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. You, Mike, pop your website into the into the chat and anyone can save the chat. Three little dots down the bottom says save chat right at the bottom. Um, over to Chris. And then I wanted to ask Lydia if she wanted to make some other points she's got in the chat. Chris. Um, yeah, sorry. Um, right, Richard, I've just sent you uh, an email. But question, schools, does that just mean, I mean, is that what primary and secondary and or even kind of colleges and, and, and academies up to secondary? But but not then for higher education kind of universities and stuff like that, or are you still kind of possibly <laughs> pending, blah, blah, blah? Yeah, I mean, it's education, right, that we kind of want to stay in the education sphere. We don't do any universities in the UK at the moment, but I should have probably mentioned that we are trying to get to every school in the world. Um, we're, we're with the UK <laughs> at the moment, but yeah, that's the aim. But at the moment, we have schools with solar in India, quite a lot in India. And yeah. there's universities in India, really big ones that we've got solar on. So it's okay. not possible. Um, we've just not transitioned to that stage yet in the UK. It's yeah. difficult. Um, and we also have some in Germany as well. Okay. No, I just got back from Germany. I just to live there. So <laughs> anyway, interesting to pick your brain at another time. Thank you, Richard. Um, no please do talk direct after this. We usually go till about eight or just just after. But um... any questions? If anyone wants to set up a call and have a chat, obviously more than happy to. I think keeping the conversation going and making those links is really important. So, yeah. So I was hoping a guy called Nick was going to pop in from South Africa. We had a great conversation last week. He tells me the grid keeps shutting off in South Africa for some reason. Like literally, they'll say that, the, you know, the main energy is off for two hours or four hours this week. And they're working on a kind of massive project to do solar microgrids in uh, not cities, but towns and villages. And the more we can link up internationally, uh, I mean, Germany is very ahead on its renewable energy and uh, replacing things. We all need to learn and accelerate faster. And if we can get, you know, get it in at the young kids level and they're gradually training in the green transition, we have to provide these green jobs for, for, for the future because there's a great one a little while ago, there's a film about oil workers and they all mm. wanted to transition out to work on windmills and solar. Not all, but there was one really enthusiastic guy and he'd got 15 of his mates and they all went, we want to leave the oil rig. And they said, yeah, there's like 12 grand grants to train in solar. And then the government pulled the grants. So they're all still working on the oil rig. It's that social mobility, isn't it? You have to provide the social mobility and give avenues to develop. Otherwise, you can't expect anyone to transition. So with yeah. you. It's critical. We had a, the MP into the very first uh, climate emergency centre in Redbridge in Ilford. There's a lady here from Redbridge. And and he was saying, look, we've got so much unemployment and people on university credit. We, they were really interested in green transition, green jobs and, and setting up colleges that can train this kind of thing. We had some other guys come down from Nigeria, uh, sorry, from a Nigeria in the chat, from a Manchester group. And they were saying there's, you know, millions of pounds in funding that's not being spent from the government, but we need 
companies on the end so that we can get apprenticeships and trainers to go into it. And there's not enough companies providing the, the green transition, renewable energy, uh, ground source, air source, heat pumps for us to actually get the millions of funding into. So help us to find companies is one of the things they were chatting. But um, that's someone else I work with doing a lot of work on that. Um, Lydia, did you have some interesting points there in the chat you want to um, bring up or, or, or make? About community gardening and the Eden project? Yeah, hi, sorry, <laughs> just uh, dealing with my son, sorry. Uh, so that's on the camera's off. Um, yeah, it was just because Chris brought it up and you asked about sort of active travel and um, gardening and things, because I run a community gardening group in Lidbridge and we, and you might be able to find like a local group that could do that with you. There probably will be one. Uh, it, I don't know if you're based in London, but if you're based in London, there's a network called Capital Growth as part of the Sustain program. And you can look on the website and you'll find loads of listed community gardening groups and you can just okay. directly contact them, work with them. And in terms, and if you're outside of London, then Eden Project has a communities strand and they have a whole network of kind of community focused gardening groups. And so you could always speak with your local coordinator through that and see if there are groups that you could partner with. So usually you, you find that the people tend to specialise, don't they, in environmental work. And so actually, if you want to do like a garden, but you also want to do active travel, you might have to work with different partners. But certainly like I run um, the Redbridge branch of Mums for Lungs. So if you're interested in, if you're interested in active travel, then Mums for Lungs is quite a good sort of group to speak with because they're very knowledgeable. And there's lots of free resources on their website, which you can just download and print out um, which would give you a lot of information it's, as well it's a good so. point because i mean part of the education roadmap for the next few years listed by the government is incorporating at schools this idea of bringing in nature more how can we integrate students with nature so they can get a real feel of of the issues as well and as from our side we as i said specialize more on you know, the electricity, thinking about carbon footprinting, what's going on here. And it, it's a difficult one because we should really just specialise in that, get that really good and then work with people that can do the other bit really good instead of trying to do a one shoe fits all. So really useful. And yeah, I wrote that down. So I'll have a look. Thank you. Oh, um, uh, over, over to Art Groupie in uh, Bristol Way, I think. Yeah, I don't think my point was going to be very useful in terms of leading on from anything. I was just agreeing with your points there, Phoenix. I'm wondering how feasible it would be to roll this out across the whole of Nigeria. <laughs> because that would make me my list of things to do. <laughs> and no, it really was. Uh, the Leke Development Foundation. Um, so uh, uh, um, solar is not still, uh, green energy is still not incentivized in Nigeria. Oil is. Uh, we were going to do this on the ground. Um, that's the thing. How possible? How soon can you get that sorted for us? <laughs> oh, that's a very good question, Alice. And and Richard, just maybe go over again the international groups you work with or countries that you're doing yeah, stuff. I, I don't know the specific groups to the best of my ability because I don't actually work with them directly myself. Um, I'm kind of just here in the UK, but we have lots of schools in India. If you look at our website, there's like a map of where we're based in the world and kind of where what markets we might be going to next um, based on the acceptance of solar partly based on the culture of wanting to go environment like renewable as well i think it's really important i don't yeah, know this, this would be uh, the grassroots level of wanting to implement uh, that's what the people the people have to act the government is never going to act 86 yeah of nigeria's economy is relying on oil so whoever gets in has got to suck it up so you wouldn't have the grants it would be more yeah 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 um we're trying to find acorn because he'd done a, a lighting africa project in which he pretty much electrified the whole of senegambia by himself but anyway um this wow. is definitely a thing um, i love it i love it and i, th I think from from my side 100 percent, that would be the aim it would be to get to places like nigeria and really help the place Perfect. So I'll money. put you in touch with um, my colleague Friday in Nigeria at some point as well. Yeah, um, that'd be sure. banging. I think the um, barriers. Also, I, I was going to say the other thing was I used to work on an oil rig twenty years ago. Well, more than that now, actually, I've had a whole human being since then. Um, yeah. And we were perfectly amenable. This was at the turn of the millennium. To uh, we thought we were. I'm actually very disappointed to put it 
extremely mildly that I'm here today because we were perfectly amenable to transitioning to renewables at that time then. And so were the crew who were largely ex-fishermen from Peter Heed. We just didn't have a mechanism. So that's another very good point that I was agreeing with. Thanks very much. Thanks. I think just to, just to add to that, the, the barrier with going to a lot of different economies at the moment is we haven't fully mastered it in the UK. There's so many schools that need decarbonizing yeah. here first. So we have to kind of cross that bridge, really master the model and then roll mm. it out to ev everywhere we can. And we've learned bits from India. We've learned bits from Germany and we're learning Definitely. a lot in the UK, but we're getting inroads now. We're making real inroads in the UK. So we need to kind of push it as much as possible across um. the UK get that sorted and then we can move to the new market. Uh, hope, uh, hopefully the development could be at the same time though, because my colleague's just done a climate conference for grassroots activists, community leaders and blah in Nigeria, which would be a different kettle of fish to UK schools, obviously. So maybe I was thinking of mentioning it now so that you could sort of uh, co-grow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really. And just start those conversations early and just yeah. you know, keep a perspective of every everywhere really. And I think we we definitely do that. As I said earlier, um, and I meant this, we don't discriminate with any school or any area. We want to get to as many places as possible. It's just the feasibility of our size as a company right now and then getting to those places. So yeah. as we grow and we can roll out to those places, we certainly will. Wicked. Um, that, that, that make, I've, I've found the thing about the oil rig workers. I think it's called rigged. Um, if uh, anyone else wants a, a final question, we're going to wrap it up shortly. Anyone else for a, a quick feedback or final question? Yeah. Two, three minutes towards the tail end of the hour. Okay, so um, absolutely inspiring. You know, it, this is the way we need to go, basically, is... Um, I was yeah, wondering, if, um, Richard, could you um, put your two different websites in here at the chat at the end? Because there's a community benefits site in the .co.uk. So maybe yeah, there's, there's the company we work with that basically does the investment side, and then we just do yeah. the asset management education and all of the other bits um but yeah i'll put both in the website right and i'd like to from this we're going to ask all of the climate merge centers are you working with any local schools are you working with a local university and see how we can accelerate that um habiba you had a quick one i started working in a school about 20 years ago um i worked in it for 15 years i'm now doing something different um during that time, there was nothing green. There was no awareness, and I already had that. So I imparted it. But to do that meant I was bullied, loathed, laughed at, joked at, um, disrespected. And I've still got all that, you know. So it's been a long... What I want to say is, well done, guys. It's a long, hard slog to get a new idea in. You get all sorts of things happening mm. to you on that journey. So you know, it's nice we've got this panel, we can rest and know that we've worked hard Beautiful. to get this far. Yeah. Poor but we, uh, we've been we've been to our community centres for 30 years. Yeah, we've been and, sort of in a sort of marriage for many And we do need these, um, you know, we need awareness raising. We've come a long way since the early 90s, uh, a few windmills and solar panels at festivals too. It is now a mainstream thing, but we really need to get them out into every climate emergency centre on the high street, linked with local land projects, linked with local solar co-ops, uh, solar companies, solar charities, whatever it is, renewables, and really get the awareness out there. So um, thank you so much to Richard for coming. Um, I'd like everyone as a, as a parting exercise, if you want to put one word in the chat about what you thought about tonight, whatever it is, happy, brilliant, renewable, whatever, uh, it's a lovely thing. One of the other groups, uh, trust the people, I think, do. So one word into the chat about what you thought uh, about tonight. And um, thank you very much for coming for your precious time. And anyone want to, uh, as we check out, thank you so much, Richard. I, I Just to say, I really want to follow up on this, you know, lowering energy costs and savings for schools, as well as the education, decentralised energy, our network's been talking about for a long time. Um you know, and, and creating modules and green skills for schools. I'd love to see some of those resources so that we can get them out to different centres and, and raise awareness. What you are doing is amazing. Let's uh, keep the relationship going and work on some things and use these 25, 30 centres that are growing across the country to link with local schools and make things happen. Richard, thank you very much for your time. Yeah. Parting comment for Richard and then put something in the chat, one word, and say what you want as you beam out. Richard, Lovely. Oh, thank you. You're doing something so wonderful. <laughs>
Oh, it's bless you. Be about it's been a pleasure to speak to all of you. I think these emergency sensors are great and they're really important. Um, thank you for your time. And yeah, if anyone wants to follow anything up with me, as I said, it's Richard at soloforschools.co.uk. And yeah, we can keep the conversation going on there. Um, thank you, guys. My email as well, just in case, because I, I, if you came to London, I could volunteer for you. I, I'm interested in that. So I'll send you my email. Oh, All thank right. you. Okay, quick check out. Anyone on the way out? A few words, whatever you want to say. If anyone wants to chat afterwards, you Thanks, can end Phoenix, out. for another there. brilliant one. All right, Bieber. It's a really good subject. Again, a Lovely. really important subject. Well done for being so astute and having this kind of broadcasting. Thank you. Keep going. Okay. Thanks. Take care, guys. Bye. Nice one, guys. Bye. Thank you. I'm going to stop the recording. Bye.